Let's move on now to talk about shortness of breath. Uh, Sometimes, obviously, a patient will complain of chest pain and shortness of breath, but let's just try to separate this out now and talk about shortness of breath. Once again, we can divide this into two classes that will help us in assessing the patient. The first is lung disease, and the second is heart disease. Now, there are some other things that might cause shortness of breath, such as morbid obesity, or recent exercise, or term pregnancy, but for all practical purposes, we're going to talk about the patient that has lung disease or that has heart disease. Now, with lung disease, one thing, of course, will be the patient that has chronic lung disease, COPD, um, emphysema, that patient going to know that diagnosis. It will be very, very unusual if you, as a pre-hospital caregiver, make the original diagnosis that someone has emphysema or COPD. That patient will generally tell you they have it. If they have an oxygen concentrator in their room, it's pretty obvious. A patient with emphysema will also have decreased O2 saturation, and they may have an increase in tidal CO2. So that should not be a a terribly difficult assessment. The other lung disease or lung condition that causes shortness of breath would be asthma. Now, asthma can can be minor, but asthma can be very severe. It can be life-threatening. And so The diagnosis of asthma, of course, is made easier if the patient has an inhaler uh, or knows that they have asthma. But here it is extremely important to take your stethoscope and listen for wheezing. Uh, Very fortunate in that wheezing is pretty obvious. Uh, uh, A wheeze is much easier differentiate from normal breath sounds than rowls, which we will talk about in just a minute. If you hear wheezing, that doesn't prove asthma, but it proves bronchial spasm. And that means that the administration of bronchodilators is essential uh, regardless of the diagnosis. It is very important that if nebulized bronchodilators do not seem to help and the patient is quite short of breath and perhaps the patient is showing evidence of not ventilating well because of an elevated entitled CO2. And of course, you should do an oxygen saturation and an entitled CO2 on any patient that's complaining about shortness of breath. Then that means that aggressive treatment is indicated, and that might even include uh, steroids and the administration of epinephrine. So once again, For shortness of breath, the diagnosis of lung disease, whether it be chronic or acute, is going to be pretty straightforward. Now, what about shortness of breath caused by heart disease? Now, this is is a little bit more difficult because the lung finding, the auscultory finding with that is the presence of rowls. And rowls is a subtle sound uh, if if you've heard it and you know it, that's great, but, but rouse can be a little bit difficult. It's, it's even difficult to, to explain what rouse sound like, but if you have hair long enough to rub your hair right in front of your ear, that makes a sound like rouse. And if you've ever poured milk on Rice Krispie cereal, that sort of gives you a loud version of what rouse. Sometimes rouse are called crackles, and it's, it's, it's a subtle sound. You probably will need the scene to be as quiet as you can make it if you're listening for rouse. And remember that a patient that has lung disease as well, for example, a person with uh, COPD or emphysema, that also is having heart failure, they don't have enough lung tissue to hold the fluid in the alveoli that causes rouse, and so you will not hear rouse on those patients. Um, Rouse can also be a finding in pneumonia. Uh, 
And rouse can also be a finding in atelectasis, in someone that, say, because of superficial chest pain, is not breathing deeply, could have rouse. So this is, this is subtle. This is not very specific. Uh, this is something that you will want to cultivate as a, an aspect of your ability to do a physical exam when you do care for a patient that you know has heart failure. Probably more important in shortness of breath from the heart is, particularly if it's acute, you still need to think about an acute myocardial infarction or cardiac ischemia, even if the patient has known chronic heart disease, that still needs to be a part of your assessment. If this patient does not have an obvious history of heart disease, it would be good in your history to try to elucidate that. Ask them how many pillows they sleep on. Patients with heart failure very often will sleep propped up on two or three pillows. Ask them uh, if they sometimes wake up at night spontaneously short of breath. Ask the patient how far they can walk. Uh, without getting short of breath. For example, walking out to get the newspaper or walking to the, to the mailbox. Um, those are all helpful parts of the history to elucidate cardiac disease. And then finally, the patient with heart failure typically is retaining excess fluid. And so the examination of the lower extremities for edema is particularly important. This may be one of the most significant aspects of the physical exam for you to do in the patient that has shortness of breath that you think may be cardiac. When you are examining the patient for pedal edema, it is very important if you notice whether the pedal edema is unilateral or bilateral. If it is unilateral, you may be dealing with a venous thrombosis and an acute pulmonary embolus which is indeed a big emergency. If you see what is much more common in heart failure, and that is bilateral symmetrical pedal edema, then in the presence of shortness of breath, uh, you certainly should consider uh, congestive heart failure. Then it certainly would be appropriate to treat them with vasodilators. Mm -hmm.